sometimes you got to get through somebody really good in a tournament to be able to make top eight. Now, <laughs> which of these players are you talking about? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it needs to get through someone really good. <laughs> they're both, you know, they're both tournament end bosses. Yes, they are, to say the very least. Ben 10 and 2 with his black green control deck this week. And we saw Ben kick off the tournament mm -hmm. uh, yesterday in round number one. Didn't come into this tournament with any buys. We don't see him on the SCG tour very much. Uh, but he's playing black green control very much like what John Finkel in the Pantheon uh, played at the last Pro Tour. Uh, seasons past Dark Petition in the sideboard, however. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't equate it to that deck a whole lot because he's got so many more creatures in his deck. Yeah. And we've talked about how that's a better avenue to, to attack the Planeswalkers. Yep. For Jerry, it's Green White Tokens. Uh, we saw him 15-0 with this deck two weeks ago in Atlanta before being knocked out in the semifinals by Tom Ross, who eventually won the tournament, of course, with Human Splashing Red. Uh, for Jerry, just some slight changes, honestly. His deck looks very much the same uh, as it did two weeks ago. N not a real reason to change too much, but he is really dabbling in quarantine field this weekend. Yep. One of the main one in the sideboard. So, both players can take a look at their opening hands. We'll figure out who's on the play here. And this should be a lot of fun. It's always nice to watch two of Magic's very best players on any circuit get paired against each other. We're underway here. Evolving Wilds for Ben. An Oath of Nyssa off of a fortified village revealing a forest here for Jerry. Let's see what Thompson will select. Uh, apparently not an easy decision here. Hey, he's going to go with a Gideon. The rest will go to the bottom. And we're going to head Ben Stark's way after he does sacrifice the Evolving Wilds, I imagine. But maybe not. And he will sacrifice the Evolving Wilds. So it'll be a swamp here for Ben Stark. Yeah, I can't imagine he... You know, if he peels a two-drop, he wants to be able to cast it. Mm -hmm. and, and really, there's not a lot of reason to leave that Evolving Wilds on the board. Um, you know, <laughs> maybe the turn six... Control monster, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> oh, I'm saving this one for later. <laughs> <laughs> Pen, Pen does have a two drop here. Atlanta we're away, so fall down 19. Sylvan Advocate and Thompson with a hanger back walker. So let's head Ben Stark's way yet again. And that, that might have been what he was thinking about. He, if he had the waste in his hand, he was probably thinking, Do I want a swamp? Do I want a forest here? Mm -hmm. Sylvan Advocate will come across for two. Another Sylvan Advocate in Evolving Wilds, and we'll head back Jerry Thompson's way. He'll draw a card. Looks like he picked up a forest. For Thompson, it is that forest. He'll pump Hanger Back Walker. He'll play Dramokas Command, take care of Sylvan Advocate, give it a counter, of course. And now we head back over to Stark, who will sacrifice that Evolving Wilds on Thompson's end step, search up a basic forest, shuffle the deck, present it over to Jerry, and we'll see him take his fourth turn in just a moment. These Hanger Back Walkers get big quick. Oh, is that a good card? Well, it's funny because it, the metagame shifts and shifts and shifts. And for a while, you know, when it first came back, came out, Hangerback Walker was clearly very good. Mm -hmm. And then it felt like the, the metagame shifted to a point where you almost could not play this card anymore. And now it's back. Yeah. It's back in a big way, too. Yeah. Advocate, Advocate comes across for two. Thompson down to 16. You'll notice that Ben Stark, he missed his land. So now Thompson... We saw him take a Gideon. Here's a fortified village. Reveal the planes. Here's a Gideon. It's on four. I have to imagine it's bringing a night ally along with it. There it is. And we head over to Ben Stark. Ben Stark will use Grasp of Darkness to take care of that hangerback walker. Three Thopters on the way. Stark will draw a card. Take a look at Ben's deck list. The thing I'm looking for right now is to have something like a main deck copy of Greer and play like Jeff Hoagland does, but it doesn't appear that's the case. Deadweight's going to take care of the Night Ally. Going through a lot of work to try to get these tokens off the battlefield. Advocate's going to go after Gideon. Two Thopters will block, hissing Quagmire, and simply pass the turn back. Oh, it's a triple block. Triple block, yes. Yeah. My fault. So Ben starts to whittle away at Jerry's board there. Yeah, but, you know, Jerry, he understands just how good the, this Gideon is on the board. In all capacities. Yeah. You know, so now he has to consider, do I want another knight? Do I want to just start cracking in for five? 
Oh, looks like he's going to crack in for five. Let's make it six with the Thopter. Start going to fall down to 11. A Plains. An Evolutionary Leap. A Sylvan Advocate with a green mana available to activate the Evolutionary Leap. And now we head Stark's way. Stark will draw. That was a pretty good turn. I've seen worse turns. Yeah, and, and missing the land drop, just, just so brutal. Some of these decks are so punishing. Yeah. Stark does have Runa's Path. He'll play Runa's Path, take care of the Gideon. Can't sacrifice that one, Evolutionary Leap. Thompson will sacrifice his Thopter, however, looking for a little bit more ammo. Yeah, and everything's good here. Let's see what he finds. As long as there are still creatures in this deck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dead Protector isn't bad, that's for sure. These cards will go to bottom. Dead Protector goes to the grip. Thompson will draw a card. Fortified Village in hand now. See the basic forest as well. Land number six is Fortified Village. In for four comes Thompson. There's a morph. Could be anything. Probably that land. Yeah. Pass the turn back over to Stark. Stark's mana issues are catching up to him as there's a swamp. Yeah, and with, with the evolving wilds on the, not the evolving, the evolutionary leap on the board, you know, Ben has to deal with these creatures, but each creature he tries to kill just turns into another creature. Yep. There's a swamp. This is not Nixless. Going to go after Sylvan Advocate. It's going to fail, of course, thanks to Evolutionary Leap. Avacyn goes to the grip. Not bad. Yeah, you can just see how good Leap is in situations like this. Jerry even has enough mana to unmegamorph the Den Protector, get a card back. We'll see what he wants to get back. Might just be the Hangerback Walker here. Could be. Although the, the big advocate is very tempting as well. And drew another copy of Sylvan Advocate, did Thompson. Yeah, this green-white deck Gener generates a lot of cards. It's good, man. It's really good. You can play short games, but it's very, very comfortable playing long games. Yep. There's a forest. Land number seven for Thompson. Den Protector going to come in. And yeah, with Ben's life being so low, you know, he doesn't even have to worry about the Planeswalker on the board. Yeah, because Omnicles can't kill anything else now. Nope. You know, he can pay a left to draw a card, brings him down to three, and he's still facing lethal for yep. multiple threats. So Yeah, by paying a life, it, it makes the Den Protector lethal next turn. Mm -hmm. We know the Angel's in the hand, the Advocate's on the board. That's all bad news right now for Ben Stark. He'll play a Forest. Yeah, now his deck is giving him those lands. <laughs> just, uh, right. just, just rub ins a little bit. Yeah, right on time. Hey, man, you wanted these? <laughs> Here they are. For Ben, I believe he does have a Woodland Bellower in hand, but I don't think that's going to be enough to save him. That's your issue there. I think he's just going to pass the turn back. Gonna at least make Jerry think about it a little bit. I mean, he sure. can't even, he can't even activate Omnixilus, which he realizes. Yep. You know, because then he falls down to three, and then and then the Den Protector's lethal, as you said. Yep. Thompson not willing to play as Archangel Avison. So, well, interesting game, a back and forth between these two. Well, in this long game, even if Ben manages to grind out another turn or two turns, it's it still doesn't bode well for him because he's got to use removal spells on these creatures, and when he uses removal spells, they just get sacked to the leap. Mm-hmm. Beatdowns. A little hissing quagmire action. Yeah, it's ready to block, or at least try. Got to get in front of the advocate. Grass, perhaps? Yep. Jerry wondering if he wants to deploy his angel now. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? Because if he deploys his angel now, Will save his advocate, the den protector will die, and then the angel will transform next turn. Yep. So there is the angel. Sacrifice the den protector. Evolutionary leap. Get another archangel. That's not a problem at all. Yep. Play an advocate. <laughs> Pass a turn back. Transformation complete. Stark's going to go down to one, presumably. 
And that is going to do it. Jerry Thompson going to win game number one here over Ben Stark. Green White Tokens very quickly up a game over Black and Green Control. As these two great players are going to go to the sideboards, and we are going to do the same thing here and see what they're working with. Ben Stark's got to languish in Ultimate Price. The season's passed. Two Virulent Plague, two Dark Petition, two Infinite Obliteration, two Kalidus Trader of Get, two Duress, two Transgress the Mind. Craig, what do we like? I expect the uh, the Dark Petition package to come in with some Virulent Plagues, the Kalidus's, and then all of these discard spells. Any real plan here? I mean, Ben's the control deck. Yep. Trying to play a longer game. Do you think he tries to maybe speed things up a little bit with this Advocate, Tireless Tracker, Cletus, maybe try to go beatdowns? Well, the problem with playing a, like a green-black control deck that has some creatures in it is that you're not consistently going to get the draws where you can be aggressive. Okay. You know, if his deck had more creatures in it, he can lean on them a little bit more. But he's going to get lots of draws that are just the controlling cards, some removal, some discard. And so I think it behooves him to stay on that path. For Jerry Thompson, two Nissa Vastwoods here, two Linvala the Preserver, two Knight of the White Orchid, two Lamholt Pacifist, two Planner Uppers, two Silk Wrap, two Quarantine Field, a Declaration in Stone, and a Dent Protector. So I expect Jerry to bring in some of these cards that help when the game goes long. So like Nissa Vastwoods, Seer, and Dent Protector that just generate tons of card advantage for him. Both players, a lot of options here. Deck's going to look pretty different for the second game as opposed to the first. So I'm curious to see how this next game will unfold while they do sideboard shuffle and get ready to rock and roll. We're going to talk about our Players' Championship that's happening at the end of the year at the Star City Game Center. You see the four, five people, excuse me, who are qualified. One is Max McVitie. He won our Columbus Invitational a little bit earlier this year. Jeff Hoagland, Jerry Thompson, and Andrew Tenjum were our Season 1 points leaders, so they're qualified. And then Jim Davis, well, he's your defending champion, 2015 Player of the Year. We got to figure out who the other 11 are going to be, and that's what season two and season three are here for on the SG Tour. Player Championship taking place at the Star City Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia, December 17th and the 18th. 16 competitors, $50,000, Craig. Yeah, I, I, that tournament is a nice, uh, nice big Sunday dessert at the end of the season. Yeah, that's a fun one. Yeah. It's really competitive. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's really cool about that one, even though it's really competitive, uh, everybody has a lot of fun. Yes. While they're playing. It's really just a unique environment and setting. Uh, three formats in Standard, Modern, and Legacy. And someone's got to come out on top. Last year it was Jim Davis barely edging out Todd Anderson. Yeah, and you bring everyone to Roanoke. Yep. Get, uh, get people to see the home office. Absolutely. It's really cool stuff. So we learn a little bit more about Jerry Thompson now. 10-2 and two here this weekend. He's a 32-year-old from Elk River, Minnesota. 20 okay. <laughs> We've talked about this. 21 of those things uh, with five wins. Yeah. Seven invitational top eights with two wins. 21? Like, it's, what? Yeah. Give that's someone else a chance, <laughs> man. That's a Take some time off. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a lot. I think number 22 might be on the way this weekend, honestly. He is uh, he's a killer here on the SG Tour, that is for sure. And he's really slicing and dicing people up recently with green-white tokens. It's been a lot of fun to watch recently. And his 15-0 uh, two weeks ago in Atlanta, I was uh, – one of the 15. Yeah, one of the victims. One of the, I, was, I was victim number 14, unfortunately. <laughs> a, a speed bump. Yeah, yeah. It was a fun match, but I was victim number 14. Uh, Jerry T, he is quite the player. Probably the best player in SCG Tour history is Mr. Thompson as we get ready to watch him play against Ben Stark yet again here. Uh, and there's a, there's, there it is. The Dew? The Mountain Dew. Dew and the Dew. That's right. 210 calories of goodness. And actually, I think it's 290. I've been giving him a lot of... A lot of crap about this recently. It's funny because he is quite slender. That's not fair is yes. what it is. It's not fair. He drinks Mountain Dew more than anyone I've ever met, and he's still... And that's nothing new. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing this forever. Forever. Yeah, you and I have known him for a really long time. Probably 10 years at least. Yeah. He's been doing the Dew for 10 years. Keeping them in business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if Mountain Dew is looking to sponsor someone, oh, yeah. Magic, that guy... He drinks Mountain Dew every day. Can you picture Jerry Key just walking around in a, a lime green outfit that just says Dew all over it? Yes, I can. Yeah? Yes. Driving the, the Dew Mobile? <laughs> Assuming there is one of those. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. But he is against one heck of a player on the other side of the table in Ben Stark, the Magic Hall of Famer, Pro Tour champion at Pro Tour Paris many moons ago with Call Blade. A deck that actually Jerry made. A big name for himself with as well on the SG Tour many years ago. So. That was one of the more difficult decks of all time. Yeah. Like, when when that format, it, it was Callblade and nothing else. Yes. And navigating those Callblade mirrors, 
super complicated. Every game was different. Yes. Which was really, really cool. I think that's a lot of people didn't realize. It. The Call Blade was definitely the best deck. It's not even close. But every game in the mirror was just wildly different, which made it a really cool matchup. Well, and there were so many resources. There were just so many decisions to be made every yeah. game. Players are going to keep their seven. Here we go. It's a swamp here for Ben Stark. A canopy vista for Jerry Thompson. Let's see what turn two yields here for Ben Stark. Look at the swamp just simply pass it over to Jerry T. A fortified village, reveal plains, Sylvan Advocate. How long will it live? Yeah, yeah, that's not sticking around. I'd be surprised if it did. And Jerry's already <laughs> reaching for it. No, it's still here. All right, and, and this gives us some information about Ben's hand. It, it says there's a good chance that he has a languish in his hand. Nissa Vaswood Seer gonna search before us. Well it, it's interesting it's an interesting thought. You know, do you leave Languish in against this deck? I know that when you're playing black white you don't. Does black green? I don't know, we'll see. It's a tough deck to languish when the planeswalkers keep generating tokens and yeah. they can just keep making them. And you also don't want to languish a deck that has hanger back walker in it. That's not ideal. So sure. it does it doesn't mean Ben doesn't have it. It but yeah, Languish is one of the few cards when you're pretty far behind can catch you up. Yes. You know, if there's an angel on the other side, there's a couple of tokens with some counters on them, or a hanger back walker has made a whole bunch of thopters, yep. you know, that's that's when you want a languish. Yeah, absolutely. But there's plenty of times where languish is going to be a one-for-one, one, and you've used all of your mana, and they still have a bunch of planeswalkers on the other side. Well, for Ben, he's untapped with that Nissa Vaswitz here. You saw Jerry Castle of his own in search of a forest. And now here's a Oath of Nissa. <laughs> Top three. Hissing Quagmire. The rest will go to the bottom there for Ben Stark. Well, we know he's got a fourth land. The question is, how does he want to navigate here? Clearly has a lot of options. Quagmire, and just pass it over. The interesting thing here is it's just a little unclear if Ben does have ultimate price or grasp of darkness. He's not the type of player to just immediately fire one off. Yeah. And, you know, a card like grasp of darkness and ultimate price, they are really good against multiple cards in the matchup. Yeah, that's just it. Ben might be saying, I can take four to six damage from this two, three, but I can't afford to not have an answer to an angel later mm -hmm. in the game. Well, Jerry's going to serve in with the Sylvan Advocate and the Nissa, And it looks like they're going to trade Nissas. Stark down to 16. Offer accepted. Gideon is here. Knight ally, pass it over to Stark. What will land number five be? Yes, yeah, so he'll start with a spell. Ruinous path. See you later, Gideon. Hissing Quagmire, pass the turn back. Stark's going to take at least four here. going to fall down to 12 now. A land for Thompson. Now it's an evolutionary leap. That's a good one on this board. Yes, it is. Let's head back Stark's way. And, and yeah, there's the Bellower. That's really big for Ben, because if he tries to attack the creatures one for one with removal, the leap just cycles them into better creatures, more creatures. But by deploying some big bodies on the board, Jerry can't just sacrifice his creatures. I think this is the way that, you, outside of killing evolutionary leap, this yeah. is the way you beat leap. Yeah, you need bigger creatures in front of theirs. Yes. There's Knight of the White Orchid. Brought that in from the sideboard. That'll be a trigger. Get himself a canopy vista. And there's the battlefield untapped, given the number of basics that Thompson has in the battlefield. And we'll see what comes next here for Jerry. Yeah. Hard for that knight to ever be bad when there's the evolutionary leap on the board. There's a land for the turn. But it doesn't appear... Any really good attacks here for Thompson? No, it, uh, not a great spot to attack, but he can set up the game for a turn or two down the line. Uh, 
you know, using the leap to go find a hanger back walker, which will then turn into a whole bunch more cards off of the leap, yep. is definitely an avenue for him. Another Sylvan Advocate and just a passing of the turn there for Jerry. Over to Ben we go. Both these players working themselves in the mid to late game now. No, uh, no, no fast exits like we've seen Tom Ross give so many people this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> they play a little bit longer into the games here. And, and, and Ben knows he needs a game plan moving forward. He, he, he expects Jerry to sacrifice a creature to leap. He expects angels to start, start showing up. He expects thopters to start showing up. So he can't just play a creature or two and then see what happens, so to speak. He needs to be more proactive here. There's a land, land of waste. Five mana. Dark Petition. Now this is the thing he gets to do in his deck after sideboard. Yep. We saw the Black Green Seasons Pass deck at the Pro Tour in the hands of John Finkel. But now you see Ben actually bring this package in from the sideboard. So what does Ben want to search up? It's a good question. We don't get a good look at it, but I kind of like the secrecy of it all. <laughs> Very KG. Yes. No spell mastery. Right? Correct. Only one ruinous path in the graveyard. So Ben searched for something that he's happy with. And Jerry's going to activate Evolutionary Leap. Hangerback Walker going to go to the grip. This is what you talked about. Yep. He'll draw. Picked up a Plains. Canopy Vista in hand as well. Given the Evolutionary Leap and the Hangerback Walker, Thompson's never going to run out of things to do. Oh, yeah. All of these lands are just good for him. Yeah. With the Leap, he, he's okay with just drawing lands for the rest of the game. And then always being able to lead. There's hanger back Walker. Two counters. I just don't think there's a good way for Thompson to attack right now. So there's ultimate price. I, I feel like, honestly, Ben's had that ultimate price for a while. Yeah. Given the way he opened up this game. Thompson's going to find a Nissa, a sacrifice, and still have an advocate in response to the ultimate price. Not bad. No, not at all. It's funny, this green-white token stack has actually kind of evolved into a green-white evolutionary leap deck. Yeah. Well, that's what makes this, the deck so good. It, it, it morphs for each matchup. Yep. Evolving Wilds. What is this? Ruinous, Ruinous Path. Make the Evolving Wilds into a 4-4. Thompson's going to sacrifice the, the advocate, of course, of evolutionary leap. So let's see what he finds here. Hi, Linvala. That's a good one. Yep. Beatdowns. I like this play by Ben because yeah. even though using the move on the creatures isn't particularly beneficial, you have to get him out of the way. Yeah, like I said, he, he needs to be proactive. He can't just let Jerry just get every awesome creature out of his deck and then hope to win later. Yeah. Now, the question is you see Thompson going to make his blocks, so he's going to sacrifice Hanger Back Walker to Evolutionary Leap. We'll go through this again. Archangel Avison's here. And he's going to sacrifice Night of the White Orchid. So now, Night of the White Orchid is here. The question I have is what had Ben searched for with the uh, Dark Petition. I, I don't think it was Ruinous Path. I don't think so either. It was potentially a Virulent Plague. Maybe. Um, he, he knows that the evolutionary leap into Thopters is just an issue. Mm -hmm. But maybe not. Maybe he got another Woodland Bellower. Yeah, keep that big creature chain going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he's not going to win this game by not attacking. For sure. So maybe just two big bodies in the Woodland Bellowers the way he went. So the big question, and we've seen this a couple times. I, I, I remember it pretty well when we watched Logan Lodge yesterday. All right, Jerry's got a million cards. Mm -hmm. But can he cast them all? Yeah. yeah. Do, can he cast them all and leave, enough, leave up enough mana to be able to leap with? Yes. You know, because right now, eight lands on the battlefield, uh, potentially a ninth one on the way. Yep. Looks like he's going to start with Anissa. But he can only do so much, and so, and he can only do so much per turn. So... He'll start with Anissa, Vastwood Seer, get himself a forest. We'll probably see a transformation here in just a moment. His deck is very mana-hungry in situations like this. That's also part of the reason I think he has the Knight of the White Orchids after sideboard. Yep. It's because those find lands as well. So there's the land. Here's the transformation. Sage Animus is here. Starts on three. Goes down to one. 
Ashaya has arrived. That's the 4-4. Four four. And now Thompson passes the turn back with mana available for Avacyn and Evolutionary League. Yep. And, and Jerry doesn't need to deploy tons of things each turn. By having an Archangel Avacyn in his hand, he, he can make all of the blocks this turn, make sure his creatures don't die with the Angel, and then slowly build his board that way. Yeah. So I'd say we're officially in the late game now. The question, of course, is how does Ben break through? Now, the reason that these green, black, black, green control decks have shown up is the ability to Dark Tradition for Seasons Past and grind you down. Yep. I don't know if that strategy beats out Evolutionary Leap. Yeah, it, it might just be too slow and clunky in this matchup. Or at least in this game situation. And you can say to yourself, well, if you kill Evolutionary Leap, the problem is solved. However... Evolutionary Leap can be brought back by Dent Protector. Yep. And the likelihood of you having a Dent Protector when you're activating Leap a bunch, pretty high. Yes. Um, but if anyone can solve this puzzle about how to work through this, it's the Hall of Famer, Ben Stark. Yeah. And he's got to figure it out somehow. Yeah, I, I liked his last turn, killing something, getting some attacks in. Unfortunately, it might not be as easy to do this turn. I think, yeah, the, the last turn was, I think, a good one. Yeah. But I think it's just getting harder and harder as yes. we go. Yeah, it feels like Jerry's playing the control deck with the inevitability here. I know. Yeah. You think of green-white tokens as more of an aggressive mid-range deck and less so as a control deck, but, again, that's, the, its ability to play as a control deck yes. is what makes it such a good deck. It's so versatile. Five mana here. Stark is going to go to Dark Petition. So he's drawn both of them this game. What's he want to search for this time? What's interesting about this is that it's nothing that Ben is doing is bad. No. It's just not as good as yeah. Jerry, or at least it feels that way. I mean, deploying a Woodland Bellower to get... What is it, 6-4 or 6-5? Yeah, 6-5 gets a 4-5 advocate. And he got a 4-5? Yeah. And just being like, yeah, that, that doesn't really matter. Yep. Stark is, I think he got an ultimate price. Hmm. Keep in mind, mana floating here, because he does have spell mastery for this one. Well, if he did get ultimate price, it means he wants to try to keep on attacking. Yep. You know, if, if Avacyn comes down, he wants to kill it in response to the trigger. I think Ben thought, is that the only way I can win this thing? So I have to keep on attacking. And I think he's right. Yeah. If Ben's turn is just kind of go, which it is right now, I, I, don't, it's, I don't love it. I know he's smart enough to have a plan, one of the best Magic players of all time. But it seems uncomfortable right now. Yeah, it's such a tough spot. Well, Thompson's going to take a look at his hand. He's no slouch either, of course. And it feels like he's slightly ahead right now. Yeah. He's going to start by sacrificing a Thopter Evolutionary Leap. Sylvan Advocate's going to go to the grip. Will Jerry go towards Avacyn now? I would think you deploy the Avacyn. He's got so many resources as, at his disposal. To not use five mana for a turn just seems like a waste. E even if one of his creatures get, gets killed. Well, he's not going to. That's one less card in Ben's hand. Mm -hmm. And Ben doesn't have a whole ton of resources right now to work with. Thompson Druid Evolutionary Elite plus the Nissa Forest right under the battlefield. Did not want to cast the Avacyn, saving it for later. What comes next? He's tapping five right away. Now this is interesting. Huh. Main phase? Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> the jig is up. <laughs> Main phase Archangel Avacyn, give all of my creatures indestructible, cast a planner outburst. You want to talk about versatility. 
Jeez. That's really good. Yep. Man. I think he may have actually caught Ben by surprise a little bit with that one. Yeah, I didn't expect it. No. <laughs> now keep in mind, planner outbursts, all non-land permanents. Yep. So Ben gets to keep the Evolving Wilds, but I did not expect that. I remember, Ashaya is still indestructible. Yep. So across that comes. He's going to leave the Thopter back on defense. It's a nice play there by Jerry T. Let's go to Ben S. He's at eight, and I think he's in some trouble. Well, we were just talking about how he needed to keep attacking to win. Yep. Now he doesn't even have creatures to attack yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and Jerry T. Very nicely navigated. Just, just very careful. You know, he, he's definitely in the driver's seat. He's not going to make any Hail Mary passes here. He doesn't need to win in the next turn. Yeah. You know, just, just pick your opponent apart. Always leaving some mana up for the evolutionary leap. Tons of cards in his hand. I think he's navigated a really nice game. Yeah. Play. And even, I think, heads up enough to bring in planner outbursts in situations like this where you would think, you know, we're kind of grindy. Yes. We don't really need a Wrath Effect in this matchup, but... You know, Archangel Avison makes Wrath Effects pretty good. It do, well, and Ben's black-green control deck, we've talked about how it, it relies on all of these creatures to get the job done. Yep. So he's going to be committing a lot of creatures to the board, and you can catch him off guard with it. Ultimate price. Sacrifice Archangel Avison over to Evolutionary Leap. You see a quarantine field, Nilf Nissa, a forest, another quarantine field, a Gideon. Hang rack walker to Jerry Thompson's hand. So it looks like Jerry's sided in a lot of control cards. Yeah. The the wraths, the quarantine, the extra quarantine field. And he's saying, in a long game, you're not going to beat me. Yeah. I Which think, is a funny right. thing to say against a deck that can be playing Seasons Pass with tutors. Yeah, that's really true. All right. Nissa down. Ben has solved that problem, but he's got quite a few problems to solve because Jerry has a million cards in his hand. Yeah. Creatures on the board, cards in his hand, tons of lands at his disposal. Picked up another Archangel Avison. <laughs> Sylvan Advocate, Canopy Vista in hand. We know how to hanger back Walker and Archangel Avison. There's the Canopy Vista. Here come the beatdown. Stark's going to fall down to three. <laughs> they all work here, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, he's going to pick the best play, but they're all pretty good. Yeah. Looks like Hangerback Walker is going to be for two, along with an Advocate. Plenty of green mana available for Evolutionary Leap. Stark will draw. Yeah, Leap or an Angel. Yep. Yeah, you think about all the kind of things that have happened in this particular game that we've watched, the back and forth, but the card that has really loomed over this whole thing is Evolutionary League. Yeah. Right from the word go. Every removal spell that Ben uses, it's basically not effective. Yeah, blanking it. Yep. Jerry's got his hands full the entire time. So even if, ben, even if Ben, for example, were to cast Seasons Pass right now and get six cards back, yeah, Jerry wouldn't care, which is a really weird thing to say. Yes. There's that Evolving Wilds. And all Ben can do is pass the turn back, so. Yeah, very rough spot. Yeah. You see Ben kind of move the Hissing Quagmires over. Make it clear I might have some interest in activating these. Thompson going to untap again, yet again. Not willing to cast Archangel Avenue. Yep, just conservative with it. Yep. Thompson will draw. Another Linbala, yeah, I that's, think. That's fun. It's a really easy card to beat. And with these sideboard cards, yeah, Jerry's just ready to play the longest game possible against this black green control deck. Everybody in. I kind of like what Jerry's doing here, which is says you got to beat this stuff first. Yeah. You beat this stuff. All right, I'll, ca I'll start casting other stuff. But I don't, I'm not convinced you can beat this stuff. Well, and it means he's not going to make a mistake. He's not going to be overcommitted to the board. You know. Just in the driver's seat, and he's going to slowly cross that finish line. Mm -hmm.
That's going to do it. Bed can't overcome all these cards and this evolutionary leap. As Jerry Thompson is going to win this match over Ben Stark. Two games to zero. Green White Tokens does it again. Takes care of Black Green Control. And for Jerry T, he's 11 and 2. He's got to win one of the next two to make top eight yet again. Very dominant. Yes. You yes. know, in a matchup, Ben knows that that's the best deck in the room. Yep. He knows he's got to beat that deck. And to still just kind of get muscled around and manhandled is, is something to see. It was leap both games. Yeah. That's really what it was. And, you know, when I first saw Jerry kind of playing this deck in Atlanta two weeks ago, and he had Leap's main deck, I was kind of like, eh, you know, maybe it's a little over metagamed. But Leap is great in this deck. Oh, yeah.